Hi folks, we're going to take a look at question number 14 from page uh, 104. And what they're looking for is the equation of a line that passes through 4, 5, 5, and that meets this given line at right angles. Okay, now they don't specify uh, what uh, version of the line they want, so we can uh, pick whatever we like. Uh, but let's take a look at the question here. So we know that if we want to find a line, in this case here I'll find it in vector and parametric form, uh, we need a point on the line and we need a direction vector. So I notice that the line passes through 4, 5, 5, so we already have our point on the line, which is denoted by this notation, R0. So while 4, 5, 5 is the point on the line, just keep in mind that R0 actually represents the vector from the origin to 4, 5, 5. Okay, so now we have to go about trying to find uh, the uh, direction vector of the line we're looking for. Okay, so I know that it meets this line here at right angles. Um, that's really all the information I have. So I'm going to start by drawing a diagram here to see if it leads me to an answer. Okay, so here I know the lines meet at a right angle. Let's say this is the given line and this is the one I'm looking for. So I know the one I'm looking for contains the point 4, 5, 5, okay? And I'm given the equation of this line. Now, while I'm given it in uh, symmetric form, I think it'll just be easier to work with if I use uh, vector form. So I'm going to write this out in vector form. So R is equal to R0. So remember that the given point in the symmetric form is found in the numerator, or the numerators. So here we've got uh, 11, negative 8, and 4. Okay, plus my parameter t times the direction vector, and recall that the direction vector is found in the denominators. Okay, so in this case here's 3, negative 1, 1. Okay, so my direction vector here is equal to 3, negative 1, 1. Okay, and the trick to this problem, and this is really what, you know, helps us solve this problem, is to use this point of intersection. Okay, we use the fact that they intersect at this point. Okay, we don't know what that point is, but we do have some information about it. So I'll call this point P. And because it lies on the given line, it's going to have to satisfy the equation of that line. So I know that the point P, okay, can be determined by using this vector equation. Okay, so let's write out the x, y, and z components. So the x component is going to be 11 plus some t value times 3. So 11 plus 3t. Okay, the y component, negative 8 minus t. And the z component, 4 plus t. Okay, now of course we don't know the value of t that gives us this point. Okay, but since it's on the line, there must be one. Okay. So we have this point of intersection, but what I need to do is I need to find a direction vector on the line that I'm looking for. And I realize that if I join these two points, I'll have a vector on the line, which will be, of course, parallel to that line. Okay, so I'm going to find the vector, we'll call it V, that joins these two points. Now this is where I'm going to choose how to do this very carefully. Okay, I could draw the vector going towards 4, 5, 5, or I can draw the vector going towards this unknown point P. I'm going to choose this direction. And the only reason why I'm choosing this direction is to make the algebra a little easier. Since we have to subtract second minus first, I just find it easier to subtract 11 plus 3t minus 4 than to subtract 4 minus 11 plus 3t. It just helps eliminate possible sign errors. Okay. Had you done this problem by going in the other direction, as long as you did your algebra correctly, would have been perfectly fine. But since I noticed that will make things a little easier, that's how I'm going to draw the vector. And we know that any vector parallel to this line will work as a direction vector. Okay, so let's calculate this vector v. Okay, so second minus first, sorry, there's the point on the line. So I know the x component is going to be 11 plus 3t minus 4. Okay, the y component is going to be negative 8 minus t minus 5, and the z component is going to be 4 plus t minus 5. Okay, we'll clean this up here. 
So we've got 3t, 11 minus 4 is 7. Here we have negative t, negative 8 minus 5 is minus 13. And here t, 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Okay, so this is the vector v, okay, which is parallel to the line I'm looking for. Now I'm going to use the fact that this vector must be perpendicular to the direction vector of the given line. And of course we know that if two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the dot product of m and v. And I know that because they're perpendicular, that must be equal to zero. Okay, so let's do that here. So we have 3 times 3t plus 7, 3 times 3t plus 7, okay, then plus uh, negative 1 times negative t minus 13, so it's minus 1 times negative t minus 13, and then here we've got uh, plus uh, 1 times t minus 1, so plus well, 1 times t minus 1, and that has to be equal to 0. And the reason why this was useful is that now I'm left with an equation that has only one unknown. So I can just solve it. Okay, so let's uh, clean everything up here. So we have 9t plus 21, and then plus t plus 13, and then plus t minus 1 equals 0. So we have 9, 10, 11t. Okay, and then here we have 21, 31, 34, minus 1 is 33 equals 0, and so t is equal to negative 33 over 11, or negative 3. Okay. Now that we have the t value, remember what we're looking for. We're looking for the direction vector of the line that I'm looking for. So I have an equation here, or I have a, uh, here I have a statement here that gives me the vector that I'm looking for in terms of t. So let's calculate that uh, the v vector now that we have the t value. So let's stick that into here. So uh, 3 times negative 3. So negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. And then here, negative negative 3. 3 minus 13 is equal to negative 10. And then here we have negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Okay. So we've now just found this vector parallel to the line I'm looking for. So it can act as a direction vector. Now I could use this vector here, or on what I'll call m2, I could use a simpler vector, because I notice these are all divisible by 2. can even get rid of all the negatives by dividing everything by negative 2. So if I do that, I end up with a simpler vector. I end up with 1, 5, and 2. And now I have this direction vector, plus I have the point 4, 5, 5, so I can now in vector form. That's what I'll start with. So I've got r is equal to r naught, which is 4, 5, 5. Okay, plus, now since I use t for the other line, I'll use s for this line here, times its direction vector, which is 1, 5, 2. And if I did want to write this in parametric form, I can just do that by uh, writing out the components individually. So we have 4 plus s for x, then for y we have 5 plus 5s, and then for z we have 5 plus 2s. Okay, and so we have two versions of the equation of the line. Okay, now if you had used this vector v as your direction vector, things would have looked a little different, okay, but it would have been equivalent. So let's just recap how we solve this problem, okay. So first thing was to realize that to find the vector parametric equation, we needed a point, which we were given, and a direction vector, and it was a direction vector that needed a lot of the work. And the way we were able to do that was to use the fact that this point of intersection, while we didn't know it, we do know that it looked I could use the equation of the given line to write out an expression for that point, and then I could use that point with 455 to uh, create 
my direction vector for the line I'm looking for. And of course, folks, please remember that one of the key things we used to solve this equation was the uh, fact that the dot product of two perpendicular vectors is zero. Okay, that's it for now.